Well, uh, his wife, well, I don't know. Uh, she was a doll, she was a babe, she was a killer. She was uh, a spent piece of used jet trash. Uh, no, uh, you took that wrong. I wanted to do spoken word, you know, right away. I, on my second record, I, I tried to do a little spoken word thing, you know. I, I sound kind of like a, a, a little kid, you know. But I, I really did want to try and explore the whole uh, world of, uh, of just being locked up in a room with you and your voice. You know? I, I remember a, a friend of mine was an ambulance driver, and he, he gave me a, a stethoscope. And uh, I used to put on the stethoscope, and I would talk into the membrane, you know, right. uh, just to give myself a, a isolated feeling. Of, uh, and I used to kind of do, do Ken for myself. To see Cerise sitting, silly, sad, moping, melancholy, mad, here in the deepest of dumps. Music, poetry, uh, language should be said aloud. Uh, when uh, when they were Homer was writing. Ulysses, he, he was using the cliches. There was an oral tradition. They had no printing press in those days. A great poet like Dylan Thomas, he, he writes to a beat. Um, uh, in my craft and sullen art, exercised in the still night, uh, there's a beat to it. In my craft and sullen art, that's seven beats exercised in the still night is seven beats in my craft and sullen art exercised in the still night so there's a rhythm there it makes it not only easy to remember but it, it but it's a discipline in the writing that's why i think uh, you can't really write unless you have a sense of rhythm ken nordine's work is doesn't feel like it was ever written down for one thing yeah you know, it feels like it just was told to you spoken at that moment, just occurring to him somehow. You don't feel the punctuation that you feel in other, some other people's spoken word language pieces. Ever wonder how spiders fit in in the immense design of things? Been a good year for spiders, or so it so seems. I'll write something out uh, about spiders, and I'll tell the musicians, now I want you to do play as if you are the spider. You be the spider, but also you have to be the net. He's a musician, you know, and he's, he's fascinated with the sounds of things. He's looking for the things that he can use that he wants to put in his, in his uh, sound uh, painting, you know. Now this is a sound painting that is indicative of the neurotic feeling of our time. Let me turn this painting on and Growing up, you'd hear these weird, creepy commercials with his voice trying to sell you God knows what, you know? But you knew the voice, because it's so distinctive. And uh, it's interesting that there is that dichotomy between Ken Nordine, the underground hipster, and Ken Nordine, the Madison Avenue guy, selling Taster's Choice. We put a little blue jean in everything we make. They're not two separate worlds. Advertising goes, uh, looks for things to do. And they came to me uh, on the basis of the first album I, I did. In the 60s, a fellow by the name of uh, Mike Kelker and, and his art director, uh, Chris Blum, they called me up and said, we want you to do something for uh, Levi's. There was a stranger who came into our town. He was tall and had eyes that could look right to the bottom of you. They had heard uh, the flipperty jib on the bibberty bop, which was a, a chant that the, in the stranger comes into town. They said, do something like that for us. Uh, you can take uh, the Levi's uh, and, and, and come into town and you're telling everybody that's what they should wear. So by God, they, they spent $250,000 in Hollywood to animate this a scene of the stranger coming into town. And it was amazing to me that, uh, that I was doing these things and allowed to do them. And we cried for more. 
No, I must go to other towns, he said, and he left. Left us with our new Levi's. Yes, we'll miss that stranger. But you know, life will never be dull in our town again. By the way, how are things in your town? Advertising feeds on the creative. They see something creative and say, hey, that's for us. If it's hip hop, that's what we need. Uh, someone doing rap, do a rap thing. Uh, whatever is the going thing at the moment th that'll get attention, they, they borrow the feathers of that bird and fly with it. A lot of commercials are poetry. The poetry of the poetry of the 20th century, definitely. Come on, old trademark. Time for your walk. Where will you take me? Sure wish you could talk. I did a series of paint commercials for the Fuller Paint Company. And I wrote 10 colors. Uh, one was all the colors combined. And it was on the air for only 13 weeks. And people were calling up the radio station, say, play that again. Instead of it going to a waste, I see, I, I'll do an album with this. I'd have the little sound of the, of the timpani in the background. And I'd, I'd write, in the beginning, no, no, long before that, when light was deciding who'd be in or out of spectrum, uh, yellow was in serious trouble. Seems that green, you know how green can be, didn't want the yellow in. Some silly primal envy, I suppose, but for whatever cause, the effect was bad on yellow and caused yellow to weep yellow tears for several eternals before there were years until blue heard what was up between green and yellow and took green aside for a serious talk in which blue pointed out that if yellow and blue were to get together not that they would but if they did a gentle threat they could make their own green. Oh, said Green with some understanding. Naturally, by a sudden change of hue, Green saw the light and Yellow got in. Worked out fine. Yellow got lemons and Green got limes. The art of uh, marketing and selling is, is, is not as far away from what we do, no matter what it is. If you're trying to sell some of the, what you might call the truth, you have to convince them that you're telling the truth. Sometimes <laughs> that takes a little bit more than saying, I swear that to tell the truth, the whole truth, but nothing. I like truth, but I'm, I probably will never get to know it too well. <laughs>